Hello everybody, it's SD Madhaven here today, and, well, I know this is a little bit early compared to most reviews that I do for the, for Danks, but honestly, I feel like I want to get this one out ASAP, just because this tank, um, in the few matches I've played inside of it, which is 11 games in total, uh, just this morning since it came out, um, yeah, I feel like I can do a review on this tank. Honestly, it's it's playstyle matches the 50 TP uh, combined with a little bit of a mix of the T54 E2, and it's honestly just really, really just an extremely, extremely strong tank. So, as I'm clicking all the wrong buttons, as you guys know, it's just me clicking the right one this time. Within the 11 matches that I've played inside the Charlemagne, I've maintained a 72.73 win rate. Along with that. Um, average 2,882 damage, assisted 1,213 for a combined total of 4,095. Average per game, over 11 matches. This thing, you get it hauled down. It sure it's reloads long, but whenever you're hauled down, people just I I I mean you could say the tank's brand new, and that no one really knows how to kill it. So we're gonna be going over how to take it down easily and be able to handle your mat matches against this thing a little bit better as my English is just um, slanguage by this point. But survival, uh, what, what really boggles my brain is that every single match I won, I also survived. And we all know how matchmaking goes on console. We see a lot of tier 10s, believe me. I saw a lot of 10s, but honestly, I did not fear them as much as I thought I would with 170 millimeters of turret armor. This thing is actually packing some really good setup with its ar armor so we're looking at 305 up in the outside slopes here keep in mind this is not against heat rounds this is against ap against itself ap rounds it has premium ap don't let the garage lie to you it's not apcr it's ap ap will readjust at five degrees on contact so honestly these ap premium rounds are super super good um, compare, let's actually go ahead and jump up against a tier 10, 113, there we go, 340 heat pin. Even against 340 heat pin, this turret at its maximum gun depression, if they're shooting you in the cheeks, they're going to pin, but if they're hitting anywhere else, it's going to be really hard to take this thing down. Especially its top plate right now. I mean, this thing is just, honestly, it is, it has surprised me in just a few matches I played inside of it. Well, armor-wise, you know, it's it's not super crazy. We got 130 up in the slope top. Actually, you know what? Let's do this on the in-game armor model because, I mean, you guys can take a look at the armor model here all you want. Just know that the top armor right here is only 31.8, so 100s one, um, are going to be able to go through this. So, Russia, 100 millimeters. Top armor, not exactly the most suitable. The top armor on top of the tank itself, though, 35. It's not super strong, but then up in the front plate here, we're looking at 80. And then the back armor, we're looking at 35. The hatch, 50. So, yeah, honestly, guys, dude, this thing, I just... it It's really nice how well this thing is put together. Six millimeters of spaced armor up on the outskirts. Then we have 20 millimeters just little thin strip. I don't even know why they have that included. No, it's just been like, yeah, there's nothing there. But it's there. 25 millimeters. As you can see, the top armor on the back, yeah, they can overmatch that, so careful if you're side scraping, especially if you're on a little bit of a slanted hill going downward. But that's not much of a problem. Now, compared to other tanks, we there's a lot of tanks in game that have under armor that you can shoot up into. For instance, the E100, the Tiger II, um, the most recently tank most recent tank added which is the k91 version 2 which i'm still playing with but i haven't just i haven't had time to do much um there is no under armor on this so whenever you're side scraping or doing anything it's also slanted as well which just increases angle allows you to over angle just a tad bit not a super crazy amount but just enough to where you're going to be able to pull out and side scrape effectively and with the turret you know Increase your armor and your gun away as you're pulling out side scraping. That way it's harder to hit you. And it's going to be a lot harder to find those weak spots. So, and then whenever they fire, then you realign the fire back at them. Uh, don't don't pull off the single, though. You'll get tracked and pinned. I'm just in a hurry. Because it, it's, it's Tuesday and I got work. 
<laughs> Charlemagne, uh, penetration, we're looking at 220, 270, and 60. Um, I'll tell you guys now, the HE rounds on this, I've tried them. They're actually just phenomenal rounds, surprisingly. 60 millimeters of pin. They, they, that is pretty high pin, 530 alpha. But my favorite is honestly the 270 premium AP round. Um, the Bison T103 has an AP round as well. It's not APCR, it's AP. And with its 300 millimeters plus penetration, it, whenever it hits, it just it readjusts. To give you guys an idea, AP compared to APCR aiming at the same plate, AP is looking at 236, APCR is looking at 270. So that there's the difference right there just in AP premium ammunition. Um, honestly, AP premium ammo, I kind of prefer it over heat rounds, but I, re I really do enjoy my heat rounds. But it's, I don't know, I'm a 50-50 on it. But these things are really gnarly premium rounds. Don't let the 270 low pin fool you. 270 AP, that's a lot of pin. However, this tank is lacking a tad bit on view range. You are going to be wanting to take optics with it. You're not going to want to really sacrifice those too much. Just because view range, you don't got it. You're not going to be assisting the team. You're not going to be able to pull around a corner and know if something's off in the distance. Um, especially with a lot of the bigger maps that they're adding back. View range right now is at its most needed. So, if you guys aren't taking view range for optics and situational awareness, I do recommend you guys try it out. Combine both of them. It might help you get your 2 mark. It might even help you get your 3 mark if you're working your way towards those. Because assist damage... Oh! That reminds me. I learned something new the other day about the game. Um, if you do track assist and then spot assist, only one of them counts. It is the highest one. So, make up your mind, you know halfway through the game if you want track assist or spot assist you can't have both you can only have one towards your mark um if you guys have been averaging like seven thousand average because you're doing track assist along with spot assist yeah it's just you got to keep track on which one you want to prioritize over the other to see if it's going to be worth it or not however don't get me wrong tracking somebody always good especially if it's near in game and you're trying to get that extra little bit of experience to try and get a mastery badge. Uh, speaking of which, I did master this tank two times in the 11 matches I played it. One of them was a 2,000 base experience break with 5,300 direct damage caused. Um, sadly, it was like my second match in this. I was not recording. I just full sent it. And this tank, you could say no one knows the armor yet and they're struggling a tad bit against it. That's about it. Max speed 35. Um, this actually doesn't hinder the vehicle because of its power to weight of 16.67, engine power 700, uh, reverse speed of 15, which is comfortable. It's not the fastest, but it's definitely not the slowest. You're going to be able to get in and out pretty easily. Uh, terrain resistance at 1.1, 1.3, and 2.3. If you guys are going to be getting your hands on this, born leader and off-road driving are two perks I would recommend to use on this just because ammo rack um in the time i did play this i did not experience my ammo rack getting hit at all even though the ammo rack is located in the back of the turret slightly on the side of the tank and a little bit underneath um during the time i played it did not get ammo racked once in the 11 matches i played but that doesn't mean you're gonna get away with what i got away with because I was pretty lucky. Firewise, uh, 20%. That is a little bit uncomfortable. Um, engines entirely in the back. And defending your rear, we're looking at 38 millimeters of armor directly on the back end of the tank. So keep in mind, yeah, if they put an HE in there, that's going to hurt a lot. And I'm actually scrolling through real fast because there's a lower plate that didn't tell you what, what it was. It is 31. Okay, so you got 38 and 31 in the back. Um, Traverse speed of the turret, 28 degrees. It is a little bit sluggish, but it's not too bad. Um, you're going to be playing hull down inside this tank, trying to get hull down as much as you can. And honestly, the reload time is 16.7. Um, I do believe I got a below 13 seconds, so like 12.5, 12.8-ish. With uh, rapid loading, born leader, loader, ventilation... And, yeah, I think that's all of them right there to help you try, try and get the reload on this down. Um, it, it is a little bit similar to the 50TP, but the 50TP does have a faster reload. 
And whenever comparing this tank to the T-34, which is the tank that it was compared to over on PC because they had the same DPM, um, this tank actually has much worse DPM than the T-34 with the most recent buff that was applied to that tank. So if, you, if you're out looking for hull down fighters and you don't want to go after Charlemagne, T-34 could be a good recommendation there. Um, aim time at 3.5, reload at 16.6. Accuracy at 0.44, depression at 10 degrees, elevation at 15. Elevation, it's not too bad, but your depression, absolutely fantastic. Accuracy, um, I'm only running one accuracy perk, which is a brain fart, actually, now that I think about it. I gotta go over stuff. So, uh, I guys, as you can see, I'm just full sending it here. We got six cents, situational awareness, last stand. Last stand I've fallen in love with just because you get below that 10% hit point mark, view range through the roof, and this 12 second reload might drop down to an 8.9 or even a 9.2. Um, rapid loading, steady aim, only one accuracy, two accuracy perks actually. We also have snapshot during turret rotation. That's just because hull down, you wanna try and keep that bloom nice and tiny as you rotate your turret. Um, track mechanic, a recommended perk on every single tank. It doesn't even matter what it is, except for Artie. You guys can just go crewless. And then Born Leader, along with Safe Stowage. Safe Stowage, um, this is actually my Super Conk and Valor, so T95 Chieftain and Chieftain Mark VI crew, so they do kind of have a little bit of a problem with Amorax being in the front. So I, I take Safe Stowage on those, but honestly, rather than having this perk for the Charlemagne, I would say swap it out for Off-Road Driving. Yeah, honestly, this tank, I am just surprised at how well it's been performing 750 signal range as well honestly everything about this thing is fantastic uh traverse speed in the tracks we're looking at 26 degrees um yeah not really much to go over i mean this is even against the tier 10 of 249 penetration and don't get me wrong if you're not utilizing your gun depression inside this tank you are going to suffer because you do need your gun depression to be able to get that armor as nice as you can get it because the second, a little bit higher up, you know, we're looking at 243. Second, you max it out. Um, even if you're coming around a corner a little bit at an angle or slant, you can actually make the entire other plate completely impenable. So as you're coming over a ridge, and then 297, that's a readjustable AP round, so below the heat, it's still 365 to... Yeah, and spaced armor on the way, tracks jump a little bit in the way. They overextend the tad bit, which is pretty nice. Even the lower plate at 168 millimeters, the lower plate on this is just phenomenal. I'm pretty sure that as I play it more, I'm going to be experiencing some rounds where I'm going to be able to peek around a corner at a just extreme angle. And even against heat rounds, heat rounds will still struggle. I mean, look at the 65 degrees effective angle coming around a corner. And then they can fire, or they're looking to hit your tracks, and then they hit the edge of them, go straight into the armor. And overextending tracks, it's it's kind of um a trick play. So yeah, like the honestly, it looks really good. Uh other than that, let's go ahead and jump into some of the replays here. So first map, we're looking at Canis. I'm not a big fan of this map. I find this map to be a little bit lacking in a couple of departments, but it's it's not bad. There are other maps that I would just rather have in general than ending up on this one. But honestly, Canis, it's not too bad, and I'm pretty sure every single time I talk about this map, I completely just bomb the name. I really do. So Charlemagne, 12.2 seconds. The 220 standard penetration that also reminds me, as I'm just a Muppet, it is a Tuesday, I'm a Muppet. Your ammunition is slow. Your AP round, so your standard and your high explosive, both travel at 957 meters a second. So you're going to need a lot of lead chasing down targets that are off in the distance. Along with that, your premium round travels at 924, which is moderately fast, but definitely not super fast. It's, it's still a slower round, but you'll feel the difference whenever you do switch over to premium if you want to fire off premium. Um, me... I've been enjoying the fact that I'm able to fire off a crap load of standard rounds inside this. And against the 50 TP here, there we go, 398. And artillery, hello, how are you? And... Okay, this wasn't the match I was thinking about. I got double shot by artillery. And it just... Oh, that was right, it was an Arctic region. 
I believe that one's up next. I'm, I'm not a big fan of Artie. Just because it does way too much damage and splash. And it kills too many crew members with a single shot. But ammunition wise, these rounds are not the fastest at all. Um, accuracy during turret rotation, 0.86. It's pretty bad. Um, damage per minute on console right now is 1580. So about 100 short of what PC is putting out. Um, so bringing us down to a 12 second reload rather than a 16.7 second reload, we're probably going to be looking around the range of maybe 2,000 DPM a minute to the range of maybe 2,300. Now, the standard rounds on this, they don't feel too bad. If you're if you're within a mid-range engagement, you don't really feel the shell velocity kind of lacking against you a tad bit. Plus, even against higher tiered opponents, this gun, it just, it feels like it's doing extremely well. Um, aim time, I'm probably not going to be buffing the aim time at all, just because I've been averaging 4,000 combined every single match that I've played inside this. Because, as you can see, I'm taking it very slow. I'm haul down, locked around a corner, and just taking my time to aim in my shots. Along with that, um, I ended up on a match on Melanovka, and I ricocheted in the range of 3,800 damage. So even the turret of this, it's not that bad. It gets the job done extremely well, especially if you're maxing out your gun depression. If you're not maxing out your gun depression, though, that is where this tank does start to kind of fall apart a tad bit. Right here, I'm pulling forward because I saw the Boras come to a stop and not move at all. And there we go. I put out a shot, and we also set him on fire. Even though he wasn't spotted, I had an idea where they were located and decided to try and pull around to take a blind shot. Um, I have been taking a lot more blind shots as of recent, and I've been landing quite a bit of them. Um, the last match I played before making the video, um, I think I put about seven blind shots in, just watching a ridge line, seeing where trees were falling, shooting behind certain bushes that are very well known to have people behind them. And yeah, it's just... It, you know, it's just experience a long time. That that round right there, um, even with 0.4 or 0.39 dispersion value, I did see that round go straight bottom left into the lower plate. If I was aiming any lower, it would have gone underneath him. So there is a, the accuracy of the tank. It's not the greatest. So you do want to take your time out to aim in your shots. Now, Talking about the forward speed and the reverse speed, with the 16.67 power to weight, I really don't see the need for a power terrain on this tank. If you wanted to, you could sacrifice a ventilation and go with a traction system just to help you get that little bit of a boost towards your top speed. Because with the 16.67, you're not going to be needing to boost that power to weight at all because you're maintaining your top speed a lot. You're able to get up to it extremely quick, even going uphill. I've noticed that I'm averaging anywhere between 18 to 25, depending on the slope of the hill. Even on um, Milanovka, going up the most extreme hills, I've been averaging anywhere between 14 to 18, depending on the terrain. If I would have off-road driving, I'm pretty sure it would actually be a lot faster than what it is now. And also, Storm. I hope Storm is enjoying uh, the Charlemagne, because I decided just to, I, I, I had a quite a bit of gold stacked up and I gifted one to Blade and I gifted one to uh, Storm as well. So hope you guys enjoy those tanks whenever you guys get to play them. Um, honestly though, now, now my personal opinion of the tank. In the time I've played it, just a small couple of 11 matches, I can definitely say the way that this thing's put together it, it's going to be a top performer depending on the map. Um, there are going to be some maps this tank is going to be struggling on quite a bit. And depending on the situations you try to get yourself into, it will struggle. But overall, it's not bad whenever it comes down to armor. Your top plate, you know, we're looking at the turret. We got 254 on the gun mantle. Um, next to the gun mantle, a little bit further out, we got 245. And then it slowly decreases until you hit the actual turret turret you're looking at 170 in a short little square area around the turret it's kind of just a flat spot lower plate at 168 and then on the turret it jumps out to 150 and then it jumps out again 140 behind the gun mantle 130 on top of the armor even your top plate at 130 millimeters at the angle that it's at this thing is just performing 
extremely well. Now, the rest of this match kind of just does drag on a tad bit. And here I am. You know, just top speed, running around, waiting for an Iron Ren to get clipped out by a uh, bat chat. Honestly speaking, though, the Charlemagne, its still concealment is actually a little bit higher than some other heavies. And I'm actually going to want to rewind a tad bit here because there's a shot I forgot to mention that happened. And then we're going to jump into the next replay afterwards. Yeah, 4,197 with 1,338 assisted. So as I am just a Muppet. Okay, there we go. It's right about here. So I do not know. He already took it. Oh. Oh, I am a Muppet. I need to go further back. Right here, I'm not spotted. Not spotted after I fired. Um, that little bit of a bush in the way, I don't know if the 50 TP had a bad crew or not, but I remember that shot, and I remember that the still concealment on this is actually better than a lot of other heavy tanks, even though I'm not running anything to boost its still concealment. It's just that the tank itself is such a lower profile that it has a better still concealment than most. So keep that in mind it actually is a pretty decent loadout for what it is it's low to the ground it can get around pretty quick 35 top speed though i'm not saying it's the fastest but with the power to wait you're averaging 35 almost the entire time that you're playing the tech now charlemagne would i recommend it for an average player or a beginner for a beginner, this tank could be uh, probably pretty decent at helping teach you, but depending on how many crew skills that you have and how much silver you're willing to invest, um, I was making about 140,000 to 200,000 silver games at the Charlemagne just because the AP rounds on the standards feel so nice and it they kind of feel like they pin more often than not, especially since they're a higher penetration AP round, which... 220 and then if you need to load the 270 AP round, but it's not heat. It's not a higher penetration heat round But with the way that this round set up it can pretty much act like a 290 heat round from the uh, K91 version 2 Just because of how it re-angles, but it doesn't mean it's gonna be pinning 290 millimeters of armor It just means that whenever a heat round looks at armor if it's not flat on but it says 290 I would actually rather fire a premium AP round than firing a heat round at that armor because the AP is going to readjust on contact. And there we go, the double artillery. And there comes a third round killing the driver again. And just slowly waiting for my tracks to repair and wanting to get out of there. Now, for an average player, with, you know, let's say about four or five scale crew, you know, pretty knowledgeable at the game, has a uh, couple million silver willing to invest in trying to get this tank fully outfitted um you're gonna be needing to take rapid loading born leader situational awareness track mechanic and maybe even off road driving stacked on top, top of that uh born leader does affect your off-road driving just a tad bit not by a whole ton but it, it there is a difference so with the 1.1 on the um, standard terrain, it turns out that Born Leader actually drops it down to a 1.05. So, Born Leader is affecting off-road driving, but not with the perk on. And once you put the perk on, the perk is just a benefit, having that on there. Now, this tank, it, it's going to stand up. I kind of feel like this is going to be one of those tanks that people are going to be going for to try and get their hands on and hold on to it for as long as they can. Just because it's not the best tank in the game. You have a long reload. If someone wants to push you whenever they catch you out on your reload, you got a 440 alpha, yes. You got a big scary gun, yes. But you do not have the DPM to handle multiple close quarters encounters. Your armor can hold up a tad bit, but it really just does depend on what you're trying to do to make it hold up. If you're not going to be using gun depression trying to stay hauled down, uh, you will be struggling a tad bit. If you're trying to fight in the open or brawl inside of this tank, it does not have enough armor to brawl. 
Um, brawling inside this is probably just a last resort. You're stuck at the last second. You have to try and push in. Now, right here, keep track of the meters. I'm looking at it. We're jumping up to 26. We're going to fire. Put a blind shell over the rock. Um, you can use the uh, meter indicator that tells you how far away a target is to kind of tell where you need to take your shot because it's able to tell you whenever you're aiming past a rock or aiming directly at the rock. Now, the Charlemagne... It, it is a bit slower. I would say that there probably are better tanks out there. But currently, it, since it's so new, no one really knows how to go up against it. Give it a few weeks, people will start killing it left and right. But in the right hands, I do think that this tank is going to be extremely consistent. Especially since it has such a decent turret that even against heat rounds from tier 10s, you can play around with it. Um, once you fully max out your gun depression, your hatch almost completely disappears. There's like an inch of it left in that entire setup. And it, it's just... It feels really nice as a hull down fighter. But taking it anywhere else other than hull down... Um, the 70mm is a side armor. Especially since it's so flat, you can reverse side scrape, you can front scrape, you can full on side scrape, especially since it's on a nice little bit of an angle. But once you expose your turret, if you're not angling your turret, your turret is going to be your hindrance, it's going to hold you back. Just because it's only 170 millimeters, 254 on the gun mantle. I have had the gun mantle stop a couple of shots. And against another Charlemagne, I did put an AP round, standard round, straight to the front of one's turret from about. 400 meters away so that is something to keep in mind that unless you're fully utilizing gun depression and just peekaboos which as you guys can see here by just using the way my gun is seeing over things I'm able to tell how much of my tank is exposed and once I fire there's moments I'm gonna be backing up just to be able to get completely off here we go and we're dealing with a really slow uh, velocity on these rounds and I'm still landing shells at a pretty decent distance just because you know it's it's, it's mid-range a little bit longer range of 400 meters 350 meters but it's not bad at all and here we go we're putting around into strum ponza we bounce pretty sure some of your strum ponza players out there are actually but happy about that bounce um I hit the gun mantle of the strum ponza that was loading you know a APCR is what they like to say but it's actually a premium AP round I might submit a ticket into the, into Wargaming saying that they need to uh, make a new indicator saying that it's a premium AP round rather than APCR because that is a little bit misleading on what it actually is. Overall though, it's a solid tank and I would recommend to pick it up if you guys have the gold and you want to get your hands on it. Um, however, I would not buy this tank currently in the first week that it's been released. It is extremely overpriced. And if you take the value of the last couple loadeds that they have done, you're actually paying almost a thousand gold more for less than just outright buying the tank. Um, I did the math on everything that was in the uh, K92 version, K91 version 2 loaded pack, and I'll tell you guys now, it was extremely disappointing to know that... You could buy everything in game for cheaper, buy about 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 a thousand gold cheaper than buying the pack, because even converting the gold, converting gold into silver, um, it it actually was cheaper than buying the pack to get the vouchers to get your hands on the equipment. So, yeah. Um, other than that, you guys, Charlemagne, I do recommend this tank. It is. Uh, phenomenal it handles well it gets the job done um other than that you guys have a fantastic day night afternoon whatever time you are catching this if you guys like the video leave a like comment subscribe seriously leave a comment though um if you guys have gone up against this or if you currently have it let me know what you think about it down in the comment section um a couple of tips i have play weird play really weird just find some weird position to get some gun depression and use it just try it out. I've done it a couple of times. Matches can be pretty good. But I got to get going. You guys have a fantastic day. My schedule, I decided to try and squeeze this in as fast as I could. And lucky for me, it was squeezed in. It's in.